In today's video, we're talking about the UI view controller lifecycle methods. You know, view did load, view will appear, view did disappear, all that stuff. I'm going to talk about when each one is called, you know, what you should be doing in each one. And I'm also going to share a common example of the difference between view to load and view will appear because that's a very common situation new developers get themselves into. And we're also going to dabble into the whole view will layout subviews and view did layout subviews. But first, I got to thank today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is an in-person coding and design bootcamp that offers housing at no extra cost for full-time immersive students. Now, if you know my story, I myself am a bootcamp grad. It was part of the process to help launch my iOS developer career, which I'm going on year five now in this wonderful profession. But aside from their iOS development program, Dev Mountain also offers programs in web development, software QA, and UX design. They even have a career services team to help you with job placement and financing options are available. And Dev Mountain loves hearing from my viewers. So if you or someone you know is ready to start this journey into iOS development, be sure to check out the link in the description. All right, back to the video. Before we dive into the details of each one, let's talk about when these methods are called, because I think that's a source of confusion for people just starting out, right? You may see a method and then you're expecting a very explicit method call to actually call that method. Well, these ones get called automatically by the system. So you're not going to see, you know, view to load get explicitly called. Now, when they're called, that's what we're going to dive into with the specifics of each one. But just know they're called automatically. Now, when you create your own view controllers, you're subclassing a UI view controller. And when you subclass the UI view controller, you're inheriting all these view lifecycle methods. So when you're using view did load in your view controller, that's why you're calling super dot view did load because you want to get all the magic that Apple built on the view controller. And then the code you enter in view did load is your own custom code for this specific subclass of view controller. Now I just use view did load as the example, but that applies for all these lifecycle methods. So if you're wondering why you're calling super in these, that's why. First up, view did load. Now view did load gets called when the view controller's content view gets created in memory or loaded from the storyboard. What's the content view? Let's pull up a storyboard to show you this real quick. So here on the left, we have a view hierarchy of a view controller. If you've ever noticed when you create a view controller on storyboard, you get this view right here by default. This is the view controller's content view. So when that view first gets created in memory, view did load gets called. This has nothing to do with what's displaying on the screen. This is when it gets created in memory or loaded from the storyboard. Now, because it's loaded from the storyboard, if I go to a screen here, that is why all your outlets will have a guaranteed value in view did load, right? That's why your outlets can be uh, implicitly unwrapped optionals. You may have wondered like, why am I force unwrapping these outlets? Well, again, in view did load, your outlets are guaranteed to have a value. That's why we can do this. Now let's move on to view will appear and then we'll do the example on the difference between view to load and view will appear. Now view will appear gets called just before the content view is added to the actual app's view hierarchy. So just before it actually shows up on the screen. So let me talk about the word appear real quick because being added to the app's view hierarchy means it's in the view hierarchy. However, it may not appear on your screen and that could be for a reason. Maybe your view is, you know, my view dot hidden, but it's still in the view hierarchy or maybe there's another view on top of that view. So just because it's not actually showing up on the screen, view will appear still happens because it's actually in the view hierarchy. So wanted to clear up that confusion, you know, view will appear doesn't necessarily mean it's actually showing on the screen. Again, because you could have dot is hidden or a view could be on top of it, but it's still there. Now let's get into a very common example on when to use view to load and view will appear, right? This happens all the time in apps. So let me pull up the simulator here. So here in this app here, so this search VC, View to load is called, bam, this is there. Now let me go to the next screen. Uh, this is the GitHub followers course, by the way. So now uh, this is the search VC. This is the follower list VC, right? Now, when I go back, right, view did load is not gonna get called, but view will appear gets called because on a navigation controller, you're just putting a new view controller onto the stack. But this search VC is still there. So therefore, view to load only gets called that first time. But every time I come back to the screen, view will appear gets called. Now, here's how we're using this in this app, right? So here on the search VC, we're using it to uh, reset the username text field to blank. So every time we come back to the screen, we want that text field to be blank. If we didn't have this line of code, that S-A-L-L-E-N-0400 would always still be there. But now let's move setting the navigation controller uh, to false into view did load up here. So this will prove that view did load only gets called once, right? Because the very first time we run it, we're gonna set that navigation bar hidden equal to true, right? Okay, look, no nav bar. And then we go to the next screen, hit get followers. Now there's a nav bar, right? We're showing the nav bar in this screen. But when we go back to the, the search VC, we don't wanna show the nav bar. It's just a styling choice. But when we go back, because view did load only got called that first time, 
now we have a nav bar here with this search thing, right? Because this navigate set navigation bar hidden to true is not getting called. So that's why we call this in view will appear, right? So remember that view did load only gets called that once. However, view will appear is gonna get called every time the view comes on screen. So now that we have that back in view will appear, every time the view comes on the screen, we're making sure we hide that navigation bar. So uh, this is just one common example of using, you know, view will appear over view did load. A lot of beginning developers get caught up on that. They're not sure why the behavior is happening and they don't understand that view did load only gets called that first time. And then if you want to change stuff every time a screen, you know, shows up, you got to do it in view will appear. All right, let's move on to view did appear. So, right, we just did view will appear. So that happens before the view appears, so you can change it. And then now you have view did appear. So this is what gets called after the view is in the apps view hierarchy and could potentially be showing up on your screen. So you wanna do stuff here like maybe animations, right? Because if you start an animation in view did load or view will appear, it may start a little bit too soon, right? You want a visual animation to start once the screen, you know, is showing up. Now moving on to view will disappear, right? So this is very similar to view will appear, except instead of getting called before the view is added to the apps view hierarchy, this gets called just before it's removed from the apps view hierarchy. So you'd want to do stuff in here like, uh, like committing save changes, right? Uh, so let's say you you're, have a form on your app and before you dismiss the form, you want to make sure you save everything. Like even if the user dismisses, you know, prematurely, maybe you want to save it for some reason. So you would do that in view will disappear because you want to make sure you do that before before the view's gone. And then you have view did disappear. So this is something you'd wanna do after the view has been removed from the views hierarchy. Now let's wrap this up by talking about the less common ones. And that is view will layout subviews and view did layout subviews. Now view will layout subviews is called when your views bounds change and it's before all the subviews have been laid out. Very common example of the views bounds changing is when you rotate from portrait to landscape on your phone, right? You can see the views bounds changing kind of in real time in the animation. So view will layout subviews gets called after the views bounds change but before it relays out all the subviews that are you know are on the screen and by default like view will layout subviews and view did layout subviews like there's no default implementation they're just there to give you the programmer access to this point in time so you can make changes if you need to so if you will layout subviews gives you that chance you know again in the example after you rotate your device before it lays out all the subviews on the screen you have the chance to to do any customization and then view did layout subviews again gives you that chance after the subviews have been laid out if you need to do anything like maybe an animation or something like that so that was a quick overview of the view controller lifecycle methods if you enjoyed my teaching style check out the link on the screen i started creating my own courses We'll see you in the next video.